Good morning, everyone. Today we read the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-six. I divide into four sections. First one to two is an introduction, and then first three to four, three to five, and then six to eight, and then first nine to twelve. And、uh, the Sabbath is mentioned in in the first three sections, and then the last section was a message to the leaders of Israel. And、uh, chapter fifty six follows chapter fifty five,、uh, telling people to listen, 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 because God's way is higher than our way. And chapter fifty six tells us what we need to pay attention to, what we need to listen, and who should listen, what to listen, and that's what this chapter is about. So let's look at the first section. Thus says the Lord: Keep justice and do righteous, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of man who lays hold of it, and who keeps from defiling the Sabbath, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. So God said, "Keep justice and do righteousness. Justice and righteousness shall be." With you, which means the Israelites must have a godly life, and this is also speaking to us today. We need to have a godly life because justice and righteousness is in the hand of God. We need to have a godly life. How do we have such a godly life? I will explain more. And it says in the beginning, the Messiah is here, is coming. So. We need to have the godly justice and righteousness. Otherwise, how can we face the Messiah without a godly life? So that was a great reminder to the Israelites back then, and also to us today. To the Israelites, the Messiah was close. It、uh, was going、um, as the first coming. And today, the Messiah will be coming the second time, and the first time the Messiah came to give salvation. But this time, when he will come the second time, he will come to judge. So he will not come as a main as a baby in a manger, but he will come on the clouds, and those who belong to God will be lifted up and go to the. Judgment seat of God. Those who do not believe in Jesus will be sent to hell. So we must have a godly life now, and that's why it says, "Keep justice and do righteousness." For my salvation is about to come, my righteousness to be revealed. And blessed is the man who does this. At the Son of Man who lays hold of it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. So two things here: should not do any evil and not commit any sin, because the Savior is coming. If we deal with sin seriously, and if we do not sin, we'll be blessed, because when the Savior comes, we'll receive the reward, and that's how we deal with sin seriously. And、uh, some people really try not to sin, very carefully. But this is not as important as not defiling the Sabbath, but keeping the Sabbath. Why? As we mentioned in the Ten Commandments, the goal of Sabbath is to connect with God and bring the creation back to God. And this is the most important thing for us in life. And、uh, It's very simple when we talk about it. If we are not connected with God, how can we have God in our lives? And then everything we do will be in vain. Nothing will last till eternity, forever. So connecting with God is the most important thing. Blessed is the one who keeps the Sabbath. Then God's blessing will come. If we do not keep the Sabbath. Then the blessing will not come to us. That's a spiritual law, a spiritual principle. When we connect with God, we have everything, full of peace and joy and blessing and abundance.
But then we need to draw close to God, connect with God. Then all this will come to us. If we don't draw close to God, it's not that God is dangerous, but we cannot get that. So what do we hold on to? If we hold on to God, then we have everything. If we hold on to the world, it just gives us something temporary. But everything will pass away, and we have been reading the Book of Isaiah. The representative of the world is Babylon, is Egypt. But where are these strong nations now? Just a piece of land will stand. Nothing is eternal, even though it was so glorious in the past. But all of this passed away. So if we hold on to God and connect with the world, I hold on to the world. And we、we'll、lose everything, and the outcome will be worse than the beginning. We、we'll、lose everything, and then we need to face the judgment of God and go to hell. So, keeping the Sabbath is very good; it's the best choice. But who can understand? That's why God has to continuously remind us, command us. It's a command that God、uh, wants His people to keep. Justice and do righteousness. We must do that, and we'll be blessed, just like as a father. When we do,、uh, we say, "Please do this, my son. You will be rewarded if you do this." The goal is to encourage the son to do that, and so God also encourages people to keep the Sabbath. They will be blessed today. Do we keep the Sabbath too? How important is the Sabbath to us today? This is worthy for us to reflect. Do we let God be the center today, or do we think of our own convenience first? So, first three to five. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak, say, "The Lord has utterly separated me from his people." Nor let the eunuch say, "Here I am, a dry tree." For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my sabbaths and choose what pleases me, and hold fast my covenant. Even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So, what is a godly, heavenly life? We should not do any evil. We should keep. The Sabbath. When we have such a heavenly life, then even though we are Gentiles, we'll be blessed. So this one is to show the Israelites that they should worship God, and we'll be blessed. Even the Gentiles will be blessed if they keep the Sabbath. Just like if we today tell others to go. To church on Sunday, but we don't do that. And just like we think this is a ministry only, and we come and we will not connect with God ourselves. Isn't that ridiculous? And we are not true inside out. Those who deceived by us to go to church will praise that. But what do you think God will think? Does He want a ministry or does He want a real godly life? So. God pointed this about the Israelites: Do not be fake, but connect with God. Keep the Sabbath. It's about our heart. It's not about our behavior. So God look at His people giving off sacrifices to Him, and then God said, "Well, my people draw close to me with their lips, but not." From the heart, so God will not look at the sacrifices. God doesn't want His people to be fake. We need to really face ourselves and connect with God, and that's a true Sabbath. Sabbath is not a habit or a custom, not just doing something superficially. And this is very important reminder for us: Do we keep the Sabbath today from our hearts? Is it like just a ritual, a religious ritual? Do we prepare our hearts to keep the Sabbath and connect with God? If we do that, then even like the Gentiles who did not belong to God, 
they could join to the Lord, and that's why God said, "Do not say, the Lord has utterly separated me from His people." No, in God's eyes, it doesn't matter if we are an Israelite or a Gentile. And most important is that we connect with God. If if we are an Israelite, but then we do not connect with God, then it's the same as being a Gentile. If the Gentiles skip the Sabbaths, they can enter into God's presence. And so it doesn't depend on a bloodline, or a nationality, or a race, to be in, to join to God. If、uh, you are an Israelite, but you did not connect with God, it's the same. Just like you, if you have been attending church for decades, but you are not connected with God, when you go up to heaven, Jesus may say to you. Sorry, I don't know you. You cannot、uh, deceive God, and God also said to the eunuchs who keep my sabbaths, who choose what pleases God and hold fast His covenant. God said, even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So, if we connect with God, we have the Son of Man, a Son of God in us. Then we have life. If we do not have the Son of God in us, then we are dead. And if we connect with God, even though we die, we're still living. Because there's God, but without connecting to God, even though we live, we are like dying, and we will eventually die eternally. And so, God told the Enoch, "Do not tell yourself that I have no life, and you will be blessed actually. And to what extent? God will give them an everlasting name." So for to those who connect with God, even if you are and unique, you will have life. What to do? To do what pleases God, to keep the Sabbath, and hold fast to God's covenant. Do what pleases God. That means put God first and the people in the land. So if we have two choices, we should ask God: Do you are you pleased with A or B more? And that's following God, and put God first. And it's most important to keep the covenant, the relationship with God. If we can do that, then we have the heavenly life. And God said, "I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name for them. If the units have no sons and daughters, that means no one will remember him. It's like he vanishes from this world." But God said, "If you keep my covenant." We keep my Sabbath. I put your name in my temple, even though the people don't remember you. God will remember you. Can you see the difference? Even、uh, the people or our descendants remember us. How long can they remember us? Do you know the name of the father of your great grandfather? No one knows. So we cannot really remember a person for too long. And、uh, if you know the father of your great grandfather, what about、uh, the name of the great grandfather of your great grandfather? If we know his name, you may not know about his life too. But God said He remembers our name if we keep His Sabbath, do what pleases Him, and hold fast to His covenant. You know, your children or your grandchildren may remember you. But your grandchildren's grandchildren's will surely not know you, but God remembers you forever and put your name on the walls of a, of His temple. So it's better than having sons and daughters. We need to be remembered in eternity, and that will be meaningful. Otherwise, it's all useless and meaningless. And God said, "I will give them 
an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And this scripture is written to the Israelites, not to the Gentiles. So that means that even if the Gentiles connect with God, will be blessed. How much more the Israelites? Why don't you connect with God? The Gentiles will find that they have a lot of blessings if they keep the Sabbath. So the Israelites, why don't you keep the Sabbath? Or Christians, you tell everyone that、uh, believing in Jesus is good, or going to church is good. Then why don't you do that? Why don't you go to church yourself? That was the situation, condition of the Israelites. Okay, let's continue from six to eight. Also, the sons of the foreigner who joined themselves to the Lord to serve Him and to love the name of the Lord to be His servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and the sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, but my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel say, "Yet I will gather to him others beside those who are gathered to him." So for the Gentiles, the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to serve Him, when they know the name of the Lord and to love His name. And when they become God's servants, today we are also the foreigners who love God and know God, and that's also us who keep the Sabbath and hold on to God's covenant. And as we do that, God said, "I will bring to my holy mountain." So the holy mountain is prepared for anyone who connects with God. So that they will be joyful in God's house of prayer. They can enter into God's temple. You know, in Israel, you know the temple was divided into the inner court and the outer court. The and the Gentiles can only be in the outer court, and、uh, also there's a woman court. But here we're told that even the Gentiles can go inside the temple, like the Israelites. God will be pleased with their sacrifices. Will be will accept that on His altar. So that is revolutional, revolutional to the Israelites. So whether you're a foreigner or an Israelite, if you connect with God wholeheartedly, will be blessed. So God's will is that the Israelites and the foreigners, the Gentiles, can connect with God together. And, but then the Israelites were not like that. We、we'll、continue to read verse nine to twelve and remember more. All you beasts of the field come to devour. All you beasts in the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yet they are greedy dogs which never have enough. And they are shepherds. Who cannot understand? They all look to their own way. Every one for his own gain from his own territory. Come, one says, I will bring wine, and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today, and much more abundant. So,、uh, in the previous section, it was mentioned that.、Uh, Keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath three times, and、uh, even the foreigners, the Gentiles, will be blessed if they keep the Sabbath. So why did the prophet mention about the beast of the field now and the beast in the forest? Well, it's meant to be a sharp contrast. If we don't connect with God, if we do not keep the Sabbath, we are no different. Than the beasts of the world of the field, and the beast in the forest. And then God said,、uh, "These、uh, watchmen, the leaders, they are just like blind and ignorant. They're just like the beast because they did not connect with God, and they are dumb dogs. They cannot bark." They just sleep and lay down and slumber. They just enjoy pleasures, and they're greedy. 
and they are not real shepherds. They lead others on their own way, and they do everything for their own gain. They first serve themselves. God has entrusted them with the people of God. God wanted the leaders to guide His people to the right path, but these people, these leaders. They just took care of themselves. They didn't bring people to God, and they just try to seek benefits from the people of God for their own comfort. And so, they didn't discern the time. They didn't keep the Sabbath. They thought every day is the same. They didn't set apart a day. To offer to God, every day they lived for themselves. They were self-centered. They didn't have an end-time perspective. They didn't think that、uh, God will come suddenly. They were not prepared to be accountable to God. If God will come again, um, just imagine how these people could be accountable to God. Just like if you drink alcohol every day, and Jesus comes, what can you say to Jesus? To them, every day is like party day. They did not set apart a day holy to God, and so in in God's eyes, they were just like the beast of the field and the forest. So that was a sharp contrast、uh, between people who did not connect with God and. The foreigners who will connect with God, so we must choose the wise path. If we connect with God, we keep the Sabbath. If follow God closely, we will be blessed. So let's be someone prepared every day, so that we can meet with Jesus, our Lord, any time. Amen. So let's ask the Lord to give us a humble heart, an obedient heart. May the Lord give us listening ears and a teachable heart, so that、uh, we can really see God's ways higher than our ways. Today, in the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-six, you're telling us to keep the Sabbath. Lord, thank you for giving us a commandment. You're showing us your will. Holy Spirit, may you open our ears today. We don't want to insist on our own ways. We don't want to become someone blind and ignorant. We don't want to become like the beasts of the field or like dumb dogs. We don't want to be self-centered, and we don't want to look our own way. And help us to set up our time for you. So now let's reflect. Where do we put God first? You see, the first one, the first commandments are about God. Apart from you, we have no God. Do not bow down to any idols. Do not put the name of God in vain and keep the Sabbath. This fourth commandment actually includes the previous ones. Do we really treat God to God? Are we consistent? Or we fake. We tell others to go to church, but we don't go to church ourselves. Or our hearts are not there. We're late. We look at the phone. Do we prepare our hearts and connect with God when we come to church? Let's reflect and confess sins and ask God for forgiveness. Yes, Lord, Your Word is just like a big torch, and we've. Help us to see our faults and sins. If we keep Sabbath, that means we really put you first. We always steal your time, Lord. We are sorry. We have despised your word. May you forgive us. Sometimes we just don't even mind when we are late, and we just come. As a duty, but our hearts are not here. Forgive us. We don't want to be blind and ignorant. We don't want to go our own way. May you forgive us and give us mercy and help us. 
were willing to repent before you. Those who keep the Sabbath, even though they're foreigner, Gentile, eunuchs, you said, "Can we can all come before your holy mountain? We can rejoice in your temple, and our sacrifices will be accepted by you." So, Lord, a lot of times we spend our effort and time. In vain, but today you tell us we keep the Sabbath and do what is pleasing to you, Lord. We want to repent before you and keep your Sabbath. May you strengthen our hearts, Lord, especially in this end time. A lot of forces、uh, from the world. We don't want to. Seek for our own gain. We don't want to go our own way. We want to go back to you to do what's pleasing to you. Keep your Sabbath. It's your Sabbath. It's not to do what we want to do ourselves. May you strengthen us and help us be willing to rejoice in your temple. So let's pray for us. Just not just for ourselves, but for our family members, or our cell members, or our brothers and sisters, or friends who have stopped coming to church. Let's pray for them by name. May the Lord strengthen them. That is a blessing to follow God in this time. Lord, help us so we can keep your Sabbath, return to your temple, connect with you, so that. We can be blessed, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I say, chapter fifty-six, verse two. God said, "Blessed is the man who does this and who keeps from defiling the Sabbath." And what is the blessing? Verse five, seven. Listen to this and receive by faith and spirit these blessings, because we keep. We are the Gentiles, foreigners who keep. The Sabbath. God said, "As we keep the Sabbath, He promised us. Even to them, I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off." So God's promise to give us eternal life in His name. Verse seven. Even them, I will bring to my holy mountain and make them draw for my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. So as we keep the Sabbath, we will be joyful. He will be accepted by God. So in Jesus' name, bless all the brothers and sisters. All these promises will come, and we will enjoy the blessings of God. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our、uh, morning devotion will end here today. May the Lord bless us all.、In、Jesus' name. Amen.